Welcome back to Physics Notes. So we have, uh, if you watched the previous video, you got a very brief and cursory tutorial on how to do free body diagrams. Now we're going to look at step two of a free body diagram if you're solving a problem, which is the force resolution diagram. Now, a lot of textbooks won't even have this in it um, because the traditional way is you would just do this as part of your free body diagram in problem solving. But I've come up with this and I'm now calling it something else because if you do this part on the AP exam at certain places, they will actually take points away. If they ask for a free body diagram, they want only the forces. If they, if you need to then take those forces and break them down into components, we are calling that a force resolution diagram. Be very careful that you don't confuse the two. When they say, give me a free body diagram, you need to know what to give them even though you know you have to do this later to solve a problem. So a force resolution diagram is quite simply when you break vectors into their components. So if I was going to give you rules for that, you would follow this, the rules of adding and subtracting any vectors um, to get a two-dimensional vector. So what you would do is you would use trigonometry to make your 2D vectors into their 1D components, okay? So for example, if I gave you a two-dimensional vector, and let's just call that vector one, this presents a problem if I'm defining my axes, my dimensions, as positive x and positive y like this, because you can see that this has both an x component and a y component. So for a force resolution diagram, or any vector resolution diagram, what you're gonna do is you're gonna break this down where that's an angle theta, you might need to find that, into its components, okay? The easy way to do it, if you think about the trig, is the opposite one, if you do the math, works out to V1 sine theta, and this is V2, or I'm sorry, V1, there is no V2, cosine theta, okay? But now I can treat these as simple one-dimensional vectors. I don't have to look at that complicated two-dimensional example, okay? So... Let's say, uh, for example, you have a monkey. Now this monkey is hanging from one vine. There he is, that's his arms. Those are his legs, there's that. And he's got another vine over here. So he's hanging from two vines. And to draw a force resolution diagram, the first thing you have to do is draw a free body diagram. So if I draw the free body diagram, I would say he is interacting with the earth. I would describe the interaction as his weight. He would be interacting with vine one and vine two separately. I would describe the interaction between him and vine one as a tension one going at that direction and now tension two going at that direction. So that's my free body diagram. Now I would break that down into a force resolution diagram where I would take my free body diagram, mg is the easy part because it's only in one dimension, but now this is T2, so this, if that's an angle theta, becomes T2 sine theta, this is T2 cosine theta, now I look at T1, let's say even though I drew it kind of poorly that's the same angle, I would break these down. This is now, if this is T1, T1 cosine theta, T1 sine theta, okay? Now that I've done that, you see that this is significantly messier, but when I now apply Newton's second law, I can do so in the X and Y dimension so that I can say some of the forces in the Y dimension are equal to, well, let's go ahead and uh, identify our axes, let's say that's positive y, that's positive x. So if I look at the y dimension, well, what are my positive ones? I have t1 sine theta. I also have t2 sine theta, and they're both positive. And now the only other one in the y is mg, and it's going down, so I'm going to say minus mg. And now you ask yourself, well, what's the monkey doing? Is he accelerating? Let's say that he's at rest. He's just hanging there, chilling, waiting for bananas. So the acceleration is going to be zero if he continues to hang there. So that means that these must sum up to zero. If in order to have acceleration of zero, your net force must be zero. But now you have an equation where you could begin to solve for T. If I gave you some angles, you could figure out some numbers, and you could figure out what T1 and T2 are. You could do the same thing 
in the x dimension, and I said that to the right is positive, so my first one is t2 cosine theta. My other one is t1 cosine theta, but it's in the opposite direction, so minus t1 cosine theta. And then I could, that's the only, only other two vectors in the x dimension, and there's no acceleration in the x dimension, so that means those must sum to a net force of zero. So now I can see that these two add to zero, so they must actually be equal to each other. Um, so you can, th this is the second step after drawing a free body diagram to finding a solution to a problem. Remember on the, on the AP exam, if they're asking for a free body diagram, you don't do this. Where they tell you, if they say on the dot below, draw the forces acting on an object, these are not forces. These are force components that you're using to solve a problem. These are the forces, these things up here, okay? So I would draw this free body diagram where they tell me to, they're going to grade that. I'm going to get three points for it. And then after that, I'm in a separate, pe separate place in my paper. I'm going to do this, do this, and I'm going to start solving my problem if they want me to solve for T1 or whatever. Okay. So that's the difference between a force resolution diagram and a free body diagram.